This is Susan B. Brock of Telluride Inside and Out. Clint and I are talking with Elaine Fisher. Yes, she is a county commissioner, but also an accomplished painter. She is having an opening of a new body of work at the Stronghouse Studio on August 6th. Elaine, um, you, were, you grew up as an artist, basically, and when you finally got to New York after college, you supported yourself as an artist, doing a variety of things, I believe. Um, could you talk about some of, your, some of that work in your early career? Well, in the early days, it was everything from working in a stationery engraving company and meeting interesting people and working with letters and whatever, and then going and doing window display for stores all over New York City. And then I started doing package design for a, a while, a short while. And that sort of was happening while I was still painting. I had a small studio in Union Square when Union Square wasn't gentrified. And if anybody can remember when things in Union Square used to cost like $50 a month to rent, that's what I was doing. And it was a pretty interesting building filled with artists and prosthetic companies. It was an interesting endeavor for me as a young person coming out from college and wanting to establish themselves in New York. And love takes you to tell you right, and you hang up your brushes. Could you talk about that part of your journey? To move to New York, from New York to tell you right, because that's where Mark wanted to be. And when I came here, it was about working on a relationship, keeping the relationship going. I was completely immersed in his life. And I just I just put that aside for a while. You worked at the Telluride Gallery of Fine Art from 1999 to 2007. How did it feel to be surrounded by the work of other artists and their art with you not working on your own? Well, it was wonderful because I realized it had been a long time and having all these different artworks around me, different painters, and watching them change over the eight years that I worked there, it was inspiring. And I was feeling the need to start to paint or do some kind of art, do my sculpture, do painting, whatever. And I hadn't had the impetus just yet, but it was coming, I could feel it, because I was looking at all these different workings thinking, I should be painting. Finally I did by taking a class with Robert Weatherford at the AHA school, and that was the, uh, the initiation into, this, into my world again. And I can't, haven't been able to stop since. People who might be questioning why you hung up your brushes, could you say what happened and what the, and the results of what happened? Um, well, I, I was doing some work and then my husband died suddenly and I was completely lost. I had really given myself over so much to someone else's life that I didn't really know my own life any longer and it took me a very long time to retrace those steps. I, I do know now that I obviously was missing a great portion of me that I put aside for much too long. When you began again, um, you began not sculpting but painting, and that was in 2007, and you created a really remarkable body of work, but it was all abstract. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about why you went abstract uh, when you had a bent for realism? Oh, I think that I needed to get marks on paper really fast. I had so much inside of me that needed to come out that the only way I could do it was by just putting marks down in every way possible, using every brush, every small brush, large brush, um, things from home, anything that had an expression to it, at least I felt with marks on paper or on canvas, that was what I needed to do. And it was, it was just an opening of my soul, of my heart, and there it was, telling my story in a way that was unbeknownst to me. Suddenly it's coming out, and it was coming out and fueled by color and line and energy. My whole body was in motion while I was painting. For those who may have missed seeing this, this body of work, they are here in the backgrounds. And here in the backgrounds is, I think, where Robert Weatherford's influence comes out because he's an artist who uses background as con makes background content, and we see that in all of this work. Why did you decide to point the brush at yourself? I guess it was still part of the journey, you know, me wanting to find out more about me. And when you paint yourself, which is tradition artistically, there's many painters over the centuries who have painted themselves, but you really have to. Detach yourself. You're not glam I'm not glamorizing myself. I'm looking at myself for what I am. This is who I am every day of my life. Do you have a favorite you in this room? Um, probably the favorite me is this large self-portrait here. Because I think it, it probably 
told the story most closely to what I was feeling on that particular day, or in that the course of a, a week that I was working on painting. You also made an interesting choice in one of your two very large ones. Um, I'll call you Elaine Pink. <laughs> in Elaine Pink, the upper body is fully realized, but the lower body is blending in to the background. What's that about? I think it's about transition as well. You know, I'm just sort of in kind of this dream state, I guess. And I felt, I mean, I was honestly pretty thoughtful at the time, but I felt like this was enough. What I saw in that was literally you merging with the painting, mm. creating a complete union between yourself and what you do. It feels like that. It feels like that now.